she stood near the window as she heard the galloping hooves of the horses. The sound made her heart thumb faster because she knew he'd finally arrived. She turned and ran excitedly through the door, her first meeting after such a long time. He was the only Grand Duke of the Empire, Kairos Ludwig III as well as her guardian. She'd also wanted him to be something more but… Well, she stopped her thoughts. That was where she drew the line. She stopped running as she approached the garden and took deep breaths to calm her heart. He couldn't see her panting like a bull because he always stressed the point of proper conduct of a lady and there was a reason for that. She was created to be the perfect trap for the emperor. He was the emperor's half-brother and because he was the only other male of the imperial family, he was a very busy man. As such was the reason, he'd been away from his estate to stay in the capital for the last three months. Chloe walked eagerly in the garden as she made her way to him. She was saddened that he'd not often visited the estate since it was only a half a day's ride away from the capital. She saw his guards at the far back of the garden and realized he must be there. Had he noticed her hard work tending to the garden, she thought excitedly. But stopped as a guard blocked her. It was one of his personal knights, Sir Enoch. She smiled and curtsied to him as she welcomed him back. Was her uncle Kairos in the garden? She questioned. She saw the hesitation on Sir Enoch's face and as she inquired about her uncle's whereabouts, he looked away. She frowned but soon understood Sir Enoch's reluctance to answer as she heard a feminine laugh ring out behind him. She flinched as she realized her uncle was with a woman. They sat close together as he touched the blonde woman's chin gently and complimented her beauty, comparing it to the radiance of the garden. She watched from a distance, every movement of his hands, his eyes, his lips. Every flirtatious gesture. The way his thumb rubbed her lips, how he smiled seductively at a woman that was not her. As he spoke, their heads close together, he glanced at Chloe, that smile still fixed in place. She couldn't look away, rooted to the spot as if in a trance. Sir Enoch stepped up, blocking them from her vision, effectively shattering her shock. He told her that Lady Elizabeth Rosalind was with him, and she took that as her cue to leave. She turned away with a sinking heart but Sir Enoch called out to her, and she could barely hear his words, too occupied with the jumbled mess that was her thoughts. She knew she should have been well used to his behavior now as this was not the first time. He'd returned from the capital with a woman in arm but it still hurt to see him kiss another woman with her own eyes. It was not until three days after that Kairos visited her. She'd heard from the servants that Lady Elizabeth Rosalind had left that very same day, earlier that morning. She'd woken up, drowsy and rubbed her eyes, because surely her uncle who'd stood near the doorway was but an illusion. But as he spoke, she realized he was indeed in her room. He smiled as he said teasingly about how upsetting it was that she hadn't even greeted him. She rushed off the bed intending to give him a hug but he smirked and grabbed her arms. He pushed her towards the wall, caging her in. She looked up at him, surprised by his actions and her heart began to beat faster. He inspected her face and complimented her on her beauty. Even the fairy queen of legend would be envious and conceal herself in your presence, he said still smiling. The closeness of his body to hers made her blush and she looked down to hide her face, but he grasped her chin and raised her head, bringing her eyes to him. They hadn't seen each other in such a long time, yet she avoided him and he wanted to know why. She turned her head as she told him she'd seen him three days ago. So, she must have seen Marquis Rosalind's daughter, he commented lightly, and she nodded, not meeting his eyes. He held her close as he told Chloe what a fine lady Elizabeth was and how perfectly she fit next to his side. So Chloe shouldn't do anything to anger her, because if that were to happen, he wouldn't be able to protect her. He whispered close to her ear about how clever she was so she should understand his words. He didn't wait for her reply because it was obvious since the only responses she ever gave was yes, or I understand. He pulled her close and turned her head towards him as he kissed her. He squeezed her waist as his kiss became more aggressive and she moaned. He slid his hand down her arm and as she spoke up, wait she said, he shushed her. You're a good girl aren't you Chloe? His words silenced her and his gaze followed the movements of his hands. Your body is still as lovely as ever, he praised. 
but it seems you've lost some weight in your chest while I've been away. She couldn't look at him as he assessed her, embarrassment clear on her face. He doesn't like it if a woman is too skinny, he told her, and she knew exactly who he spoke about. She knew Kairos preferred slimmer women, but he never allowed her to be one of them. And that was because she was an alluring trap set for the emperor's demise. When she was a little girl the person who'd saved her was Kairos. Her mother had banged on the door of Viscount Garnash's estate as she begged to take in little Chloe. It was the winter when she was six years old that she'd learnt that her mother's husband couldn't have children. Her mother had gone hand in hand with her for several nights and she'd begged in the snow but that had only ended in a beating, as Chloe had watched her mother protect herself from their brutal strength. And on that frigid night, Chloe had lost the only warmth she'd had. She'd collapsed near her mother's lifeless body, and she'd wept for what she'd lost. The Viscount of course had remembered Chloe's mother well, although she was already betrothed to another, the Viscount had taken her against her will, for his own pleasure. But in spite of all of this, he didn't want annoyances like an unwanted little girl getting in his way. But she had made her way into the estate although not on the permission of the Viscount, but of his son. He was an obnoxious little boy with a sadistic mind. The young master had a repulsive habit of treating those under him, like dogs. She'd cried as he'd commanded her to get down on her knees, utterly helpless. And that was only the start. Within House Garnash, she'd lived as a beast. She'd crawl on all fours and lick her master's feet. In dirty, foul-smelling clothes, she was forced to act like a cute animal for their entertainment. She was but a beast in human skin. She'd stood behind the young master as he'd welcomed a guest. Their eyes met for the first time as she was introduced as the house Garnash's illegitimate child. Kairos had passed by as he'd said in an uninterested tone that he'd heard she was treated worse than a brute. His words infuriated the young master and he'd of course taken out his frustrations on Chloe, and the abuse inflicted on her was much harsher than usual. She'd been locked in the cold underground cellar and as she'd laid there groaning in pain, the metal door had opened to reveal the man she'd seen earlier. He'd knelt down as he'd greeted her and had touched her gently. She'd flinched at the touch having only known violence for so long. She'd been wary at first but soon allowed him to soothe her wounds with medicine. And after, he'd given her a plate of soup that she'd scuffed down with a fury. Do you want me to free you from all this, he'd asked, but Chloe didn't respond, so engrossed in her bowl of soup. When he asked if she'd wanted to go with him, she'd slowed down to ask him why he'd ask her something like that. He smiled and reached out his hand to her as he'd said, because I like you. His words had shocked her enough to drop the bowl and she'd grasped his outstretched hand. He'd patted her head as he'd praised her for being a good girl and his kind gestures brought tears to her eyes. It was that very night, the Garnash estate was set ablaze with a great fire. Chloe had stood and watched as the ferocious flames devoured her biological father and the rest of his family. Kairos grasped her shoulders as he told her with mock sympathy in his voice, Poor Chloe, you're alone now. But she'd always been alone she'd said with a small smile. And as the first snow had fallen, he'd said, Come with me then. She left with him on a carriage and as she'd stepped off, her hand in his. She'd set foot on the grounds of the Grand Duke Ludwig's castle, for the first time. Her life as an illegitimate child of Viscount Garnash changed after she'd met Kairos. She'd sat with him at the table, and she'd hesitantly called him sir as she heard everyone else do, but he told her to address him as uncle, since her father was a very distant cousin of his. The word confused her because no one else called him that and she hardly understood what the word meant. She'd thought that word was special for just her, so she'd smiled and called him hesitantly, Uncle? He'd laughed and patted her head as he'd praised her. She looked much better now that she'd bathed, and she blushed in embarrassment. But that was a compliment he'd said as he'd called her pretty. As she'd gazed at him, she'd noticed how different he was here in his castle compared to the Garnash estate. He seemed much happier and at ease in his own castle. He told her that this was now her home and she would always have the backing of House Grand Duke Ludwig. And that was how Kairos had become her guardian after losing the entirety of House Garnash. Her status had changed to the daughter of some distant humble relative of Grand Duke Ludwig. 
As they'd sat together eating dinner, he'd randomly said, His Majesty loves all the beautiful things in the world. The way he obsesses over shallow appearances is unimaginably foolish. And she'd later found out the reason Kairos had taken her in. And for the first time in her life, she gratefully thanked her mother for the beauty she'd inherited. This beauty that led her to Kairos. Kairos reminded her that beauty alone wouldn't capture the emperor's heart because he was always surrounded by beautiful ladies, and to make her stand out amongst the many pretty faces, Kairos taught her skills that could draw the emperor's attention. But Chloe was only desperate for Kairos's affection so she followed his orders and studied everything she could. And she soaked up every little gesture of affection Kairos gave her. As she learned more about the world, it was only later that Chloe truly understood Kairos's words. She was a luring bait to be tossed away to the emperor. Kairos was naturally a kind and gentle person, not only to Chloe but to every woman he encountered. That very sweetness was as addictive as honey is to bees, and Chloe was no exception. She'd fallen hard for his saccharine disposition that was in fact deadly poison. But perhaps this too was part of his elaborate plan since she was a precious flower he'd raised to be planted by the emperor's side. And if she were to love him, he would never have to worry about betrayal from her once she'd gained the emperor's favor. She'd sweetly confessed her feelings to him as he sat in the garden reading a book. The words spilled from her lips, unable to contain this emotion. She was seventeen at the time she'd confessed to her first love. Cairo smiled as he'd closed the book he'd been reading and glanced at her as he questioned, Love, you say? She fidgeted nervously under his gaze, but then he surprised her as he pulled her down into his lap. As he gazed down at her he said, So you're already at that age. I've been waiting for this day to come. He called her name softly as he told her that the day has finally arrived. The day she was to become a woman. She could hear her heart beat, it beat so hard. He caressed her cheek lightly as his hand traveled down to her shoulders, but then he aggressively pulled her to him as he kissed her. As their lips separated, he pulled back and smiled. You need more practice, he said as he laughed gently and Chloe smiled too, overcome with emotions for him. He told her he loved her too as he pulled her slowly into his arms and hugged her. Within the walls of the Ludwig castle, they were the only family to each other. She felt content being held in his arms and his words made it all the more sweeter. But before she could enjoy this moment any longer, his next words shattered her heart once again. How could he not adore her since she would be the one to bring his brother's head to him in the future? Her eyes were wide in shock as his words registered and she couldn't have stopped the tears that ran down her cheeks. She pulled away and looked at him as her tears fell. She'd realized then, at the ripe age of seventeen, that she had no worth other than to be an alluring trap for his brother the emperor, Raymond del Astaroth. She looked away, as she tried to hide her tears. His words hurt her more than she could describe. She pulled away from his embrace, but he refused to let her go. Don't avoid me, he commanded softly. And as she looked at him, he praised her for listening. He spoke as if he enjoyed watching her tear-filled eyes. Look at me with those eyes, he said. And then he kissed her, gently and sweetly as if he really did love her. He wiped away her tears as he told her how crazy it made him to watch her cry. But she would have to work harder if she intended to please the emperor, to make up for her inexperience. He reassured her that she would learn step by step and kissed her once more, but when he did, she wrapped her arms around his neck as she clung to him. And with those kisses, she couldn't control her hopeful little heart that just maybe, their relationship could move in a different direction. He would kiss her at random times. As she walked in the garden, he'd surprised her with a kiss and commented on the blooming peonies in the garden. And it had all felt so natural, as if they were one of those couples that appeared in romance novels, but that fantasy was viciously ripped apart when he'd put on a show in front of her with that woman in the garden. She'd stood by the window as she'd watched him do so much more than kissing with that woman. He'd of course noticed her but that didn't stop him. As if encouraged he smirked and continued. She'd realized then that their moments together meant nothing to him and they continued in that stagnant relationship. Drowning in an ocean of his compliments, she clung to him.
she couldn't resist his kisses that held no love for her, and she pathetically sought out his affection as if she was a starved beast for it. She'd sat in the parlor with Lady Elizabeth, the woman Kairos had put a lot of effort into entertaining. She'd begun to frequently visit more, as was the case now. She waited for Kairos and Chloe had served her tea, as she waited since Kairos had instructed her not to get on Lady Elizabeth's bad side. She looked at Chloe and questioned the relationship between Kairos and Chloe. He must have a lot of trust in her if she felt comfortable enough to meet guests on his behalf. But Chloe just smiled as she explained that she was a mere illegitimate child of humble origin and a distant relative, that was taken in by him. But Lady Elizabeth was not convinced as she told Chloe how ridiculous her words were since the ties between House Garnash and House Ludwig had weakened long ago, and she resided with him the castle as she called him uncle. Chloe bowed as she said that she was but a lowly woman who did not deserve the attention from a daughter of a marquis. Lady Elizabeth smiled menacingly as she told Chloe to get on her knees like the lowly woman she was. Chloe who was afraid to upset her, got up and did just that and Lady Elizabeth smiled triumphantly. She tilted her cup and poured her hot tea onto a kneeling Chloe. Head hung low, she did not move. Kairos had taught her many things, but pride was not one of them. And instead of feeling humiliation, she'd been relieved that the hot liquid had cooled enough before it had touched her skin. If not for that her skin that Kairos treasured might have scarred and she would have probably been kicked out of the estate. Lady Elizabeth grabbed Chloe by the chin and looked into her eyes as she said, how tenacious you are. Chloe looked away to find Kairos watching. He didn't look particularly angry but rather amused. Lady Elizabeth was surprised by his sudden appearance, and she called out his name nervously and the saucer fell to the floor and shattered. A shard cut Chloe on the hand, and she winced at the sting. Cairo shocked, stomped towards them, but rather than check on Chloe who'd been injured, he stomped past her and took Lady Elizabeth into his arms as he questioned, Are you all right? Chloe sat on the floor and watched as Cairo comforted Lady Elizabeth, soothing her, patting her gently. Chloe watched the hands that had patted her countless times, pet Lady Elizabeth's head softly. Her hand stung but she looked up as his stern voice called out her name. He looked at her angrily as he asked her, What have you done to my guest? She looked down as she apologized but he didn't wait for any more words as he banished her to her room. She was to wait there until he called for her. He told her not to leave her room because he didn't want such a delicate lady like Betty as he affectionately called her, to run into Chloe again. He then guided her out of the room by the hand. Chloe sat on the floor alone in the room and she thought that his eyes that hadn't looked at her once since entering the room was so cold and heartless and that felt like a punishment in itself. A hand appeared before her and the voice that accompanied it was Sir Enoch. Please allow me to escort you to your room, he said, but she refused softly as she looked away. But when he insisted, she looked up at him and he wore a tender smile. She watched him for a beat before she accepted his hand and stood. They walked down the hallway in silence, his hand still grasped hers. She pulled away as she assured him that she was fine now, and he glanced down to see the wound on her hand that bled lightly. Pardon me my lady, he said as he took her and cleaned the cut before wrapping it up. She looked at her now neatly bandaged hand and then to him as he bowed and walked away, but it wasn't until later that she realized she'd never offered her thanks to Sir Enoch for his help. As the sun set, Kairos had come to inspect Chloe's injury. He told her that he'd already warned her that he wouldn't be able to defend her when involved Lady Elizabeth. He gently rubbed her injured hand as he told her that he was truly upset to see her body hurt. But then tacked on that she was a jewel to be offered to his brother after all and his words hurt her more than her injured hand did. He unwrapped her hand and the handkerchief fell to the ground. He smiled at her and kissed her cut skin as he told her to be more careful. He then licked the tips of her fingers, and she moaned. The light kisses to her fingers sent jolts throughout her body, and her feeble attempts of resistance proved utterly useless in the face of Kairos's actions. He kissed her ear as he asked her age now, and Sir Enoch answered from the doorway where he'd stood, that she would soon be able to attend her debutante, and he smiled. It would soon be time. She knew what he spoke about and that only saddened her more. 
while he'd eagerly waited for this moment, she had dreaded its arrival. It was time to meet the emperor. She stood with Kairos as he pointed out the emperor and Chloe finally caught her first glimpse of Raymond del Astaroth. Flaming red hair paired with striking red eyes, he was a sight to behold. And next to him was the empress, Dahlia. Kairos explained that while they'd married out of convenience, Dahlia was a greedy woman, and she would most likely prove to be an obstacle for Chloe, so she was to keep her distance from Dahlia. And soon she'd stood before the very man whose heart she'd planned to steal. He sat on a seat meant for the emperor himself and he gazed at her curiously. I wonder if you are really as they claim, he said. She bowed gracefully as she'd been taught and introduced herself. My name is Chloe of House Garnash.